green leaves contain an abundance of chloroplasts so chloroplasts absorb sunlight and together with carbon dioxide from the air and water from the roots manufacture food by the process of photosynthesis now this is a huge long tree so how is the water that is absorbed by the roots is getting transported upwards to the leaves or the food that is manufactured in the leaves coming down to the roots well that is because of the presence of two pipelines in the plant the first pipeline is the water pipeline and is known as the xylem so this is the xylem which is the water pipeline of the plant and it conducts unidirectionally or in one direction from the root to the leaves so xylem conducts water from the root to the leaves now there is the second uh, pipeline that is present in the plants it is known as the phloem phloem is the food pipeline of the plant it conducts food downwards from the leaves to the root also it conducts or transports this food from the leaf to the upward portion of the plant which is situated above that leaf so the xylem and the phloem together forms the conducting tissue system of the plant so the phloem operates bidirectionally that is in two directions it can transport food downwards from the leaf to the roots and also upwards so let us see how that is happening now consider this leaf this leaf is bright green in color which indicates the presence of an abundance amount of chloroplast so this green leaf can manufacture food by the process of photosynthesis now notice this leaf this leaf does not have an abundance amount of chloroplast see it is almost whitish green in color so it is uh, manufacturing food but in a very small amount and all this food is going is being utilized by this leaf in the growth but the leaf is growing it requires a lot of energy so the amount of food that this leaf is preparing is not enough so the food prepared by this leaf gets transported upwards to this leaf and it also gets transported downwards to the root since the entire plant requires food to stay alive so we've studied about the three kinds of permanent tissues the parenchyma tissue the colenchyma tissue and the sclerenchyma tissue now all these three tissues are permanent tissues which means that they cannot divide and they cannot grow any further now notice one thing in the parenchyma tissue all the cells that make up the parenchyma tissue they have a thin wall they are oval in shape and there are spaces in between two cells similarly for the colenchyma tissue and the sclerenchyma tissue both of them are made up of single kind of cells see the colenchyma tissue is made up of the colenchyma cells cells with the thickened walls mostly towards the corners and the sclerenchyma tissue is also made of sclerenchyma cells the cells which have highly lignified and thickened cell walls so all these three tissues consists of a single cell and hence these tissues are known as simple tissue now the xylem and the phloem which forms 
the conducting system, the conducting tissue system of the plant, they do not contain one kind of cell. They contain two kinds of cell. They are made of parenchyma cells and sclerenchyma cells. Since there are more than one kind of cells, they no longer remain a simple tissue. They form a complex tissue. So the xylem and the phloem is made up of parenchyma cells and sclerenchyma cells which forms a complex tissue. So permanent tissue can be divided into two categories, simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue. Now simple permanent tissue can be further divided into three kinds, the parenchyma tissue, the cholenchyma tissue and the sclerenchyma tissue. Now all these three tissues contain one kind of cells and hence they are simple tissue. But the complex tissue like the xylem and the phloem which forms the conducting tissue system of the plant, they are made up of more than one kind of cells. They are made up of parenchyma cells and sclerenchyma cells and hence they are known as complex tissue. 